guys, it's Caitlin and welcome to 31 Days of Creativity where I post a video every single day in the month of December. That's right, every single day. I post a variety of videos, so if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. During the month and in general, I post videos on DIYs and makeup tutorials, reviews, hauls, and more personal videos like this one. Today's video is going to be an art portfolio on my sculptures. I have done other art portfolios in the past, and I can leave those down below. I have a watercolor one, an acrylic one, a 2D collage drawing one, I think and I can leave any other ones down below. This one, like I said, is gonna be on sculpture. It will be a long video, so I am sorry about that, but I'm gonna go in depth how I made it, what kind of finish it has, what was the assignment, stuff like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first one I wanna mention I have right here, this is a bronze statue, so it's significantly heavy, girl, and this is of a Pegasus. So basically it's made completely out of bronze. It originally was made of wax and then it's hard to explain but it's a process where you're going to flip your design up and put it into a container and put plaster in the container and it creates a mold basically of this and then you fill it up with the bronze. So that's how you do it. I'm very proud of this piece. I actually did this in high school but I still think I, it's still one of my favorites and it's mounted on a wood platform that my teacher actually did for me so that was really nice. Then we did a, I can't remember what the finish is called but I believe it's a sulfur, some kind of sulfur finish which creates a black base and then I went in with some gold rub and buff which you can buy at Michael's or whatever, and I put little highlights of gold on the wings. So that's basically how I made that one. Another bronze statue is of Michael Jackson. I'm a huge fan of Michael Jackson. He is my favorite artist of all time. I love him. And this was actually my first bronze statue, so I don't know why I showed you the Pegasus first, but whatever. Um, this is also bronze made in the same finish, and the bronze actually comes out like this color. It's like a goldy, bronzy color, obviously, but the finish is black, which we use the sulfur dye or whatever. But what I did actually down here is I coated it, and then I went in with a buffer, which is like an electric machine, and I, it kind of like scraped away the black finish. That's how I did this one. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of this one. I love Michael Jackson, and he just chills up in my room on my shelf. All right, moving on to the next piece of artwork that I made is actually a ring. This is what this one looks like, and I'll give you a nice close-up, because I don't think I have any pictures of this guy. This is what he looks like. Basically how I made this one is again, it's very similar to the bronze process. You make it completely out of wax and then you put it in kind of a mold with um, plaster so it makes a mold around it and then you fill it up with silver. So it's a very similar process. So I won't go into too much more depth because it's exactly the same thing except with silver. <laughs> Moving on to soapstone. Soapstone is a type of stone that looks like this or like this. And basically it's just a solid rock and you have to use you know chisels, you can use the power tools, you can use uh, files which is a lot of time what I use. I made two of these guys and I made another one that I actually don't have with me um, but I will have a picture up for you guys. This one's kind of like a wolf fox. Won't go into too much depth on these guys but I mean they're kind of fun to have and they were fun to make too and this is a bear. The one that I don't have is actually my favorite. It's the most elaborate one that I have but again I should have pictures up for you guys. Um, this is of a wolf. It was in a few shows across Michigan. I'm very proud of this one as well and it's mounted on a wood base and again carved with mostly files and I feel, I feel like used a Dremel a few times which is an electric power tool so yeah. Moving on to clay which is my favorite medium to work with. Um, I made a little coffee cup or coffee cup, tea cup I'm sorry. This isn't one of my favorites but it was just kind of fun to like make a, I made actually three so I'll have a picture up for you guys but it's got a nice brown glaze in it and then a nice teal one and then it's got a nice turquoisey one around it. I mean it's okay like I'm so proud of it you know it's just about the process and about the journey and you know, all that shebang. So there's that. This is of a mermaid. I'm gonna zoom you guys out just a little bit. And this is what this one looks like. Basically, the assignment was to do a figure, whatever kind of figure you wanted. And I decided, hey, why not do a mermaid? Because you know what? YOLO. It's She's got a really nice long tail and she's got lots of detailed scales in there along that match her top. I almost hit myself in the face. <laughs> and then her hair is individually kind of you know, but basically it's just clay and then I used a acrylic paint actually to give it a finish. I used a brown, a dark brown base that I just covered the entire thing in dark brown and then I used some diluted green 
water. I kind of wanted it to look almost patina like, almost like a old bronze statue. So I used a watered down green, like a foresty green color. And I kind of just drizzled that all over to give it like a patina look. And then again, I took that gold rub and buff. That stuff is amazing. This is one of my favorite finishes. And I put that, it's the same thing that I put on the Pegasus's wings. And I put it on the highlighted areas, like as you can see here. I love that finish. I love it. One of my favorites. So I have a little bit more of a creepier one. I actually really like doing darker pieces. I don't have many, but they're one of my favorites to do. So if you're a little like squeamish, I don't I don't think it's that gross to look at because I'm definitely a squeamish person. Of course I made it, so I don't know if this will gross somebody out or anything. But this is the next one right here. Basically, the assignment for this one right here was to take a fear and put it in a piece. Put it in an artwork piece. <laughs> My fear that I decided to choose was getting my blood drawn. I have a really big fear of needles. Not, not so much needles, but getting my blood drawn. That's the biggest thing. It just really grosses me out. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. And I get panic attacks from it, and it really, really freaks me out. So that was my fear that I decided to do. What inspired me to do, like, the spikes and everything is, like, I wanted to show the viewer how it felt to me when I got my blood drawn. Because looking at it, it makes you feel maybe, like, a little uncomfortable. It maybe gives you, like, creepy crawlies. That's how I feel. I feel anxious. I feel like my skin's crawling. It feels, it feels uncomfortable. And that's what I wanted to come across in this piece right here. For the hand, I will show you how I did that. And it's a really cool technique. It's really heavy, so girl, give me a second. This is extremely heavy. So this is how I made the arm part. Oh my god. I basically made a mold of my actual arm. This is one of the sides, and I have another side right here. This is basically what it looks like. My mold of my arm right here. I can't show you guys that good. My teacher actually helped me do that because I basically just had my arm like this. I covered it in Vaseline because if you don't, your hair will rip out because if you just coat yourself in plaster, it's gonna like rip your hair out, girl. So I had like my hand, complete hand like covered in Vaseline so I could easily get it out of the mold. And I just had my fist clenched like this, how I wanted it, and I had to stay still for about 20 minutes till it dried completely. And then I was able to do two molds on the other, on each side and then push them together and then combine the two like this. And then I just made a slit down it and then inserted these spikes, which I just handcrafted all of them and attached them individually. The glazes I actually hand, I bought, so if you have a glaze store near you, I bought them. I don't have these specific names. This is just a white one, a blue one, and a red one. That's literally it. I just drizzled some of the blue in there. So, uh, yeah, you can mix your own glazes, which I did actually with my coffee cup, but um, you never know. Sometimes if you do something a little wrong, the glaze can come out wrong. So if you buy them, you're like almost guaranteed to get that color that you want. So that's what I did for that one. The next three that I'm going to talk about I do not have with me personally because they are really big and too hard to show you, but I have pictures of all of them. The next one I wanted to talk about is a vase that I made. It is about 20 inches, so like it's hard to fit in the screen. It's a significantly large vase, and I really like the way it turns out. It's just got a really big interior with some like flaps that like go like this. It's pretty symmetrical. It has like a geometric pattern on both sides. Again, symmetrical. It's got a brown glaze that I made. And it's funny because I actually use the same glaze on my vase as I did on this coffee cup. Um, in some of the veins of the <clears throat> geometric pattern, you see this turquoisey color on this cup right here. And then the blue is um, on the rest of it. So it's got all of these colors in the vase. The method that I used for that it was just coiling and just like I would coil like and make like a long skinny piece of clay and I would just wrap it around and put some slip on there and connect them until I made like a huge vase and I just did it and took a long time but I am very proud of myself. It took a very long time. I have my last two products are both busts which are basically heads. The first one I'm going to talk about looks like this guy. Again, we'll have pictures. But she is, she kind of looks like me. She was originally supposed to be Brooke Shields, but shh, don't say that. It looks more like me in my opinion, so I just always tell people it's a self-portrait. I don't know much to say about it. I don't really know the finishing because my teacher helped me do it, and this was again in high school. So 
it was kind of annoying because I wanted to learn the finishes and I don't they never really told me how to do it they just kind of did it you know what I mean so yeah I can't really talk about the finishing too much there then the last one is the most recent one that I completed which is a full-on self-portrait of myself and I will show you that I actually made a mold of my face girl mm. that was a pretty terrifying experience I literally have a mold of my face like my teacher had to cover my face in plaster and I don't know if you guys can see I actually breathed out of um, straws you guys see the marks in the mouth I breathed out of some plastic straws and it was the most weirdest thing ever I felt like I was being a buried alive I kept trying to be really calm and like really really relaxed because it's stressful because not only are you doing this but the whole class was looking at me when I was doing this I was laying on a table you basically put a sheet of like insulation or like um styrofoam even and you cut a hole around it and you put your face in it and then you lay flat and my teacher my professor I had the straws in my mouth and he had to coat me in plaster all over my head while I'm laying down I had to stay like that for about 20 minutes and you know we had like hand signals like they would ask me good you know I'd have to do that obviously I could not communicate and in addition I had my face completely slathered in Vaseline because again you don't want your eyelashes to like be ripped off from the plaster that's not something that you want that would be so painful so you have the Vaseline a very thick layer over your entire face um, and then after that some girls I couldn't because some of the plaster had actually gotten in my eyes which was very uncomfortable it was a very it was kind of burning so once I was done and escaped <laughs> from my trap um, they had to like walk me to the bathroom because I could not see so I literally had to hold their hands and they had to walk me to the bathroom so it was an interesting experience and now I have a mold in my face so I definitely I would do it again because when it's in a good controlled situation it's okay as long as you're calm and everything that's basically how I did that and the entire um, sculpture is actually hollow so I made the mold in my face and then I used a mannequin to kind of mold the side of the head and with clay it's really difficult you have to make sure that the clay is not too hard or not too soft to be able to attach it to each other they have to be of the same kind of moisture and you have to make sure that they are um, solid enough to stay up because like I said the head is hollow so you have to make sure it doesn't completely collapse so clay is very tricky to work with and everything and then the same technique for the finish I used with the mermaid that was it for my <laughs> that was very lengthy I'm assuming this is gonna be a really long video so hope you guys liked it I hope you learned something um I really hope you enjoyed some of my artwork so I'm gonna let you guys go thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow bye sadly it is you I watch the tears